Good structure and clear signposting are key for your Moodle course. Amidst all the chaos of resources and activities, it's important to flag up those activities that are urgent or timed or essential. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can quickly and easily organize our content in Moodle and use completion tracking in Moodle to help distinguish clearly between core and background tasks or activities. And the first thing I need to do is to make sure that completion tracking is enabled. To do this, I go to the course settings, scroll down until I see completion tracking and switch to yes to enable it. I can now add the completion tracking block by turning editing on and searching the blocks menu for completion progress. Right now it's telling us that there's no activities with completion criteria. We need to add some, so let's get started. I have a bunch of stuff here, a module guide, some lecture notes and handouts, a PowerPoint, uh, the assignment submission area and a couple of links. Right now, they're not in any particular order and there's nothing to indicate to students what they need to do with them. So first off, let's move them into the relevant sections. Good. In terms of highlighting the most urgent or significant activities, the most obvious one to look at is probably the assignment. We want to make it easy for the students to see that this is something they need to complete. So let's add some completion criteria to it. I'm going to go into the activity settings, then scroll down until I see the option for activity completion. Now by default it is showing that there's no activity completion, but I'm going to change this to show activity is complete when conditions are met. Now I can specify what those conditions are. I'm just going to specify that a student needs to have submitted into this assignment for it to show as complete. And now I'm going to set a deadline for this, which is the same as the due date for the assignment. Straight away I can see the small checkbox next to the activity, indicating whether it's been completed or not. The completion progress box has changed too. There's now a blue bar representing activities that haven't been completed. Underneath it, it tells me what the activity is, and by clicking on it, I can navigate directly to that activity. When the activity is completed, this bar will turn green. If the deadline passes without it being completed, it will turn red. Good. Now, it might be a good idea to provide some kind of additional activity here to make sure the students are ready to submit their assignment. So I'm going to add a checklist activity. I'll call it the assignment checklist and I'll add a short description explaining why I want the student to complete it. Finally, I'll set the completion criteria so that a student has to tick off all the items for it to show as completed. Now I can add some things that I want the students to check before they submit their assignment. I'll move the checklist before the assignment and now I have two activities showing in my progress box. Now let's look at our module guide. Now module guides are funny documents. They tend to contain pages and pages of information, but buried in there is some key information students really can't do without. Things like assessment criteria, deadlines and so on. So we're going to take those pieces of information and move them into activities that we can add to our completion progress. Now the easiest way to do this is with a quiz. I'll call it module guide quiz. Again, I'll add a short description explaining why I want the students to complete it. Now I'm going to have three questions and I want students to be able to get them all right, so I'll set the pass grade at three. In the activity completion settings, turn on the conditions option. And this time I'll specify that students have to have a grade and that they have to have a passing grade. I might set a deadline here for the end of the first week of term, just so that students who don't complete it quickly will see the red box and be encouraged to do so. Save and display. Now there's no questions here yet, so let's add some by clicking Edit Quiz. Click on Add and choose New Question. To make life simple, we're going to add a standard multiple choice question. Give the question a name then enter your question. 
Now this question's only going to be worth one mark, so I can leave this as it is. The general feedback is what everyone sees after they complete the quiz, so in here I'm going to paste the assessment information from the module guide. In the answers section, I can add the different options students have to choose from. For each answer, I can determine how correct the answer is. So, for example, in this case, a reflective log is 100% correct. As this is really just a formative quiz designed to get students to pay attention to important information, I'm not going to be very harsh with it, so I won't impose a grade penalty for each time they get a question wrong. Right. I have my module guide, I've got my module guide quiz as a learning check. Students have to complete the quiz in order to turn the blue box green. I can replicate this same pattern now with my other topics. For each topic I have a single activity that highlights the key things students need to know or have completed before they move on to the next topic. This can include, for example, making a choice or contributing to a forum or providing feedback. Now, although I have a fair amount of content in my module, students can easily see the core activities that act as markers highlighting the most important information they need. As a tutor, I can track my students' progress by clicking on an overview of students. This gives me a simple visual display of how students are progressing through the course and can help me see quickly if any of them are falling behind and might be glad of a little support. But is there anything else I can do to signpost core activities and make sure that students complete them on time? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Yes, there is. We can use labels and formatting to help organise the content in our sections and to signpost the activities more clearly. Go to Add an activity or resource and select Label. In the text box, add your heading and underneath it, add a short description. I'm going to use the styles drop down to make the heading stand out more. Save and close and now I can drag the label above the quiz. To make the label and the quiz look more distinct, I'll indent them both using the move right option in the settings. So there we have it. We've turned our bunch of resources into a structured and clearly signposted asynchronous learning experience. We've used quizzes and other activities to highlight core information and we've used completion tracking to highlight that core information and help students track their progress through the course.